Let me ask you a crazy question. Which of these two would you be willing to give up? All your democratic rights, including your freedom of speech, your right to vote, or the future of our planet? Now, which would you choose? Now, you may think, what rational person would ever force you to make such a decision? Well, I just did, but you don't know me, you want to challenge my rationality. But when we talk about sustainable energy, that is exactly the dilemma. On the one hand, the ways we use and waste our energy these days threatens the future of the planet. On the other hand, our democ democratic governments zoom in on the well-being of their citizens, on their warm flats, on their air-conditioned theaters, on their sustainable, reliable, safe energy supply right here, right now. And because of this focus on individual well-beings, it seems that our democracies are not very well able to deal with the larger ecological concerns. Now, for me personally, this dilemma, sustainable energy versus individual well-being, democratic rights, is very important. I grew up in Bavaria in the 1980s, and that was the time when in Germany environmental concerns became really big. Environmental pollution became obvious everywhere. Polluted lakes, polluted rivers, polluted air. And then, in 1986, Chernobyl happened. The worst nuclear accident ever. And that was very close to our borders. So when I was 12 years of age, 11 years of age, I really wanted to do something to improve our environment. But already back then, the dilemma dawned on me that sustainability and well-being and democratic rights may not go very well together. And that was particularly worrying, because growing up in Bavaria doesn't only mean that you have this nice environment, very much like you know it from the sound of music, but it also meant growing up in the most eastern of all West German states. And when I grew up, it was still the time of the Cold War. My grandparents only lived less than an hour from the Iron Curtain. And I remember a walk in the woods, I must have been again something like 12 years of age, standing on the top of a mountain just right above the tree line. And I looked down, I looked to the other side of the Iron Curtain. And what I saw looked very much like what you see behind me now. Now it's a German-Czech border, but back then, I looked down and I looked into no man's land. And I imagined there, there might be another girl, a girl of my age, being there, being trapped behind the Iron Curtain, imprisoned without even knowing it. And this girl doesn't have the freedom to think and choose her own way of living in the way I enjoyed it in the free democratic state of Western Germany. So for me, it was always a matter of the heart to harmonize sustainability, sustainable energy, with individual well-being and democratic rights. And well, now, by approaching this matter of the heart by a very rational point of view, it became my profession. I'm now a professor for philosophy of technology and philosophy of science. And my background, my training, was in physics and philosophy. And working on energy and ethics is really working on the frontier where these two fields, where physics and philosophy meet. So, Working on energy, I find so important because energy technologies are so much at the core of our daily lives. I mean, in the end, it was energy technologies who brought you here today. May you have come here by train or by car. It is energy technologies that run your computer, who you can later watch this TEDx talk online. So energy is really at the core of our daily lives. Now, what about the environment then? You may think, now, once again, I'm going to ask you this crazy question. Choose between sustainability or choose for democratic rights. But I'm not going to do that. I'm not asking you to make this choice. Actually, 
there is no dilemma. And I will tell you why. This dilemma I just introduced, I introduced because almost everybody in the energy debate talks about it. May it be the CEO of a big energy provider who denies climate change? May it be the environmental activist who forces, who are, fights for a green totalitarian state? But this dilemma, this dilemma is actually not real. We just perceive it as such because of two reasons. One is, we hardly ever really address what sustainability is actually all about. And second, we have a too narrow concept of well-being. Most of us, most of the time. Now, what about sustainability? Sustainability makes us zoom out, zoom out from our own individual well-being, from the well-being of our generation, to include the well-being of all future generations. Now, sustainability is all about justice, all about fairness between generations. Now you may think, well, then I know what sustainable energy is all about. You even show it to us. It's all about renewables, water, wind, solar. But all energy technologies, not only fossil or nuclear fuels, also renewables, all energy technologies come with their own risks. There is no non-inflammable fuel. For example, globally, hydroelectricity is responsible for the largest number of deaths per kilowatt hour per year. And that even when we include the disasters of Chernobyl and the more recent one in Fukushima. Hydroelectricity destroys unspoiled nature. You see it here for the Three Gorge Dam in China, currently one of the largest hydroelectric facilities worldwide. So, talking about sustainability is always talking about how to balance, how to trade off the risks different energy technologies pose. Now, keeping in mind that sustainability is all about fairness between generations, the question to address is, what is it that we have to distribute in a fair way? It is not resources, it is not energy, it's not even electricity. What we have to distribute in a fair way between generations is well-being. Now, humans have a very different concept of well-being. My wish for a second car in our family may not be as important as preserving beautiful landscape for future generations. But then, the need for a safe and reliable energy supply to run a hospital may very well outbalance the value of beautiful landscape for prosperity. That's a dilemma. So, it seems what we need is to know which aspects of human well-being are more important. And this is exactly where our modern democracies fail, where they get it all wrong. When we assume that what is good for a person can only be known by herself, then there's no other way in asking her how much she values, for example, unspoiled countryside. We can go out and ask, and that's what is done, how much would you be willing to pay to preserve this landscape? But that spoils sustainability, because simply we cannot ask future generations. So, are we now really back to the dilemma, the dilemma I posed at the beginning, that sustainable energy and human well-being, the center of our modern democratic states, just don't go well together? No, not necessarily. Maybe, maybe we just slightly posed the wrong question. Maybe it is not all about well-being itself. That may well only be known by the person herself. But there are prerequisites, there are things human beings need to have in order to do two things, develop an individual concept of well-being and to live a life according to it. And these prerequisites, these must-haves, these are universal, the same for everybody. 
And these are the freedom to choose your individual way of well-being and to live within limits a life according to it. Now, what are these freedoms? Certainly money will play a big role here. With money you can buy a car, for example. And this car gets you the freedom to go from one place to another faster. It gives you the freedom to go to places you couldn't have gone with your feet alone. But apart from these economic freedoms, you need to have a lot of other freedoms to really enjoy your car. You need to be able to learn how to ride the car. You need to live in a society that allows you to ride a car and doesn't forbid it simply because you're a woman. You need to live in a society where you can vote for a government that allows you all these freedoms and so forth. Taking this focus on basic freedoms, what does, what does it mean for sustainable energy? It means that it's not only about renewables, but we have to take a very close look at whether the impacts of our technologies are reversible. For example, <clears throat> when in the near or distant future we find out that wind energy comes with unacceptable risks. I don't know what this could be, but just imagine there are some unacceptable risks with wind energy. Then it is pretty straightforward how to eliminate this risk. We can simply dismantle the wind turbines and get rid of the risk more or less from one day to the other. Now think about hydroelectric facilities that dam up large amounts of water on a huge scale, let alone about nuclear waste. Then this possibility, the elimination of the risk from one day to the other, is simply not possible anymore. Then again, when we look at basic freedoms to start with, we also need to acknowledge the positive sides of energy technologies, because Hardly anything is so versatile and gives you so much freedom as energy or electricity. You can, you will use it to get back home after this TEDx event. You can use electricity to talk to your friends at the other side of the world. Electricity, energy is really amazing in the freedoms it gives us. When we take this serious, then energy technologies with larger energy density, such as nuclear, fare better. So talking about sustainable energy, it's not as simple as saying wind is all good or nuclear is all bad. The ethics of energy is a very complex endeavor and it doesn't leave much room for black and white judgments. It's all a complex shade of gray where some energy technologies fare better in some contexts and fare worse in others. And the shades of grey also hold when we look at the demand side. It is not as easy as many of us would like it to be, including myself, to judge this guy as simply unethical with his ridiculously huge SUV, just because he uses up too much energy. His behaviour may be problematic, his behaviour may be not correct, but in order to know this, we need to have a look at the bigger picture. We have to have a look at his concept of well-being. We have to have a look at his life circumstances, whether he's got five handicapped children, four sick grandparents, maybe he's got both, who knows. But we cannot judge without knowing the bigger, broader picture. Now, at the beginning of my talk, I ask you to make an impossible decision, a decision between sustainable energy and your individual well-being, your democratic rights. But this dilemma was not real. It just appeared to us, it appears to us as a dilemma because we look for simplified solutions. The ethics of energy is a complex question and so will be its answers. I told you I'm a physicist and a philosopher, so deep down in my heart I'm a nerd and I do like nerdy things such as Einstein quotes. And Einstein once said, we need to make all problems as simple as possible. 
but not simpler. And when we take this serious, when we stop oversimplifying the problem, when we take well-being as an embracing concept to include basic freedoms, then we can bridge the gap between sustainable energy, between sustainability, and our own best interests. So, in the end, you don't have to choose. You don't have to choose between sustainability and democratic rights. When you really know what sustainability is all about, you can have your cake. You can have your cake of sustainability and eat it too. Eat it by enjoying all your democratic rights. Thank you. <laughs>